Before you buy, fragrance one offers for men. Yep, this is the scent that has started my personal fragrance journey. And if you stay to the end, I'll tell you a little bit about behind the scenes and how I overcame the problems together with my brother, obviously, Jeremy Fragrance, when it came to crowdfunding our company that I co-founded, Fragrance One. And this was our first release. The problem was nobody has ever smelled it, including me when it comes to the final version. Yes, I actually didn't smell the final version at the time of the launch, but more about this later. Stay tuned. This bottle actually will go uh, on eBay because it's already opened. But I also do have a couple of bottles that are still sealed. Uh, this is uh, unisex, but I'm going to list them in my online store under kraftpowerstrength.com. The link will be in the description below, so check it out. I actually got something special. We'll talk about the fragrance just in a second. Just let me get something. This is actually how it started. So this is one of the rare original bottles that are hard to get these days. And this is the way it started. Actually, this is how it started. <laughs> if some of you remember. But what is this scent? Let me tell you about the scent profile first before we get um, get ahead of myself here. So let me check this out. The good old juice. Man, this still hits. I got to tell you. The only, the only fragrance from our brand that I liked more than this was actually Black Tie. But that's me specifically. This one is much more crowd pleasing. This has been developed, like many other fragrances from that brand as well, have been developed by Alberto Morias, who is a very famous fragrance uh, perfumer. And uh, it features a blend of synthetic molecules and natural ingredients that are combined in a really nice package here. So the main accords you can think of are kind of citrusy, woody, a little bit of musk, and a, a somewhat of a powdery dry down overall it's very fresh and spicy um people once they move beyond the hate for my brother whether it's justified or not he's a very polarizing figure uh let me hold this one up let me see if this actually changed a little bit in terms of how they aged Ma maserate <laughs> Where was I? Oh yeah, um, once people get beyond whether or not they like my brother, the fragrance obviously is a compliment getter. It's very fresh, it's very mass appealing. It's very versatile with this fresh citrus opening. However, there's a couple of cons that came with the whole story as well. And mainly, we were aware of that. It's the packaging, it's the presentation. The reason why I made this joke that this started like this is because we initially didn't even launch it with a, a cap because uh, Jeremy thought it was not important to do that. And, you know, to a degree I understood, but I was kind of surprised because I was still relatively new to the industry. Um, this could have been done a little bit better. We did then add a little uh, cork or, or like a paper type of protector for transport. Then we had these aluminum caps. And for the new bottles, they, then we transitioned to the new bottles. They had those aluminum caps. And uh, they, there was also a belief, if I remember correctly, there was a clear bottle. And then there was a black bottle. And then we had a black bottle with a black cap. And this is uh, still aluminum, by the way. But um, yeah, that, that's that. So the problem was more with the presentation and the polarization of my brother in the industry. And let's not forget the price point. Um, because I don't even think it was really the problem of the fragrance. The problem that I see here was with, and I don't take this the wrong way, guys. But it was the audience that my brother mainly attracted to. And also to me personally, it didn't like that. I believe me, there were arguments between my brother and I. I was close to having a heart attack because <laughs> um, the pricing didn't make sense to me, even from a brand perspective, because the idea is to present a perfect fragrance 
for the perfect situation to get the most compliments. Um, so that means that the user, the customer, is usually somebody who is not familiar with too many fragrances, which also means that they're less likely to buy at a very high price. Now that putting aside, it is a very high quality sense, um, uh, scent. It has. We had absolutely no budget on a uh, no budget limitations on the ingredients. We worked with the best companies, the best perfumers. Um, so there was something to this. And when other brands can charge it, I think they're. You know, you don't have to buy it. But I do understand why there was a lot of lot of, um, let's say, frustration by the community. So I want to acknowledge that. And I realized that. Whoa! Almost destroyed my MacBook here. Um, we then created a little smaller size which was the 10 ml i'm just gonna give this one a hit why not and um that was a little bit more popular because people could finally actually find out what it smells like now what it smells like i discussed but the longevity and silage is ridiculous especially for a fresh fragrance and trust me i don't have any affiliation with that brand anymore if you followed me on this channel, you know why. Um, it actually lasts a heck of a long time, for, especially for a fresh fragrance, which makes it great uh, when you want to work, wear this to work and you have an eight hour shift. It's perfect. You know, it just does what it does. It's a performance beast. It's a compliment beast. However, beast you want to call it is definitely there. Um, yeah. So where can you buy this aside from eBay and uh, my online store that I link below? You can always buy this on Fragrance One. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much this for that. And I will list. I'm not going to list the original bottle. I think I'll just keep this one. I will list this bottle here on eBay. Um, oh, yeah. One thing that some people say that it smells similar to Mont Blanc Explorer, a little bit of Creed Aventus. You hear um, that Aqua di Joe or the Sauvage is somewhat in there. Of course, you understand. I understand that all those are actually crowd pleasing, very successful fragrances. So it's not necessarily a diss, I would say. Um, and you know, there's only so many accords you can go with, especially when you go for something that's crowd pleasing. However, this was originally developed, and it took actually 40 to 50. Uh, feedback loops between my brother and Alberto, which is unheard of, really. So I'm sorry, Alberto, <laughs> that you had to go through that. <laughs> but yeah, so this is that. Now let's get over to what I promised you in the beginning. I wanted to talk for a second here for those who are interested about how we were able to almost sell a million dollars worth of this fragrance without ever anybody having to smell it first, including me, which was one of the co-founders. Why me? Because I was living in New York City at the time when the uh, actually I was living in Vienna at the time when the uh, when I launched the the Kickstarter um, the Kickstarter campaign. But then in, in ten days later, still during the campaign, we actually moved to New York City, and um, that's where I kind of got disconnected from it a little bit because they were still trying to figure out it was about three to four months before release. They were still figuring out the final uh, formulas. So I even haven't smelled the final formulation. I did, however, smell a couple of prototypes and they were all pretty damn good, if I can say so. Um, but yeah, I didn't even smell it. However, the point is, how do we sell it? The point is what I just told you. Um, my goal while running the campaign was obviously to remove the fear, uncertainty and doubt of everybody who's interested in the fragrance, meaning I want to support Jeremy or I like the fragrance. I believe in his vision. I want to buy this, but I don't know how I smell. What could I do there? I focused on the only thing that made sense, which is I basically do, told the customers, I don't care if you like the fragrance or not. That's not what you're buying. You are not buying the fragrance. You're buying the compliments because like I mentioned before, we checked all those boxes with this fragrance. We optimized it for compliments in the workplace. So if you're a dude who likes to get compliments in an office environment or similar, this is the scent for you. And that's how this worked. And that's also 
shows you that if you focus on the why and what problem a product solves for the customer, then you have a good way to communicate that with with your customer it's not really about what they're buying it's why they're buying it and what problem this thing solves for them so that's that uh, i hope that wasn't too boring oh yeah one little thing while i was looking around here while i was browsing an image because i didn't want to take a new one i came across my old photos of all the entire brand so if you can if you remember this is like some of the first stuff that came out i took all these it was kind of fun uh, for our social media. Then we had the gentleman's lounge, the candles. That was a lot of fun. Office with red pepper. Date on a bicycle. Let me know if you liked the photography back in the day. That was all me. You can even see myself here with my wife <laughs> in the background. And this is the mask that I was wearing when I proposed to her in Rome. <laughs> so this is all very sentimental. And then here, this little thing, we bought this for our daughter that resulted from our initial date. That's why I put that in there. Uh, this one was fun to shoot. This was on my office as well. This was from my New York uh, living room, actually. So that was kind of cool. Uh, it was a fun image. This, I... That you can actually see my uh, DIY neon sign in here, and then the bottle sits on a on a little uh, scarf or something. The date in <laughs> in the bedroom, I literally put it under the blanket. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, here's some of the actual ingredients. Uh, yeah, what else do we have here? Some fun ones. I bought all these props, and actually, I <laughs> I still have this one here somewhere. Uh, this little cigar holder, my daughter recently asked me what that is. And so here, this is the cigar holder from the bottle. Uh, no, from the picture. Um, so that was kind of fun. Here's some more office. Then we had the small ones. Again, my neon sign. That was in West Palm Beach. Look at this. Isn't that a great shot? <laughs> if I can say so. Look, and then that was during... Uh, the pandemic, okay? We actually experienced a 40% growth of the business during the pandemic, which I thought was absolutely nuts because I thought that nobody would buy fragrances when they can't go out. But it turns out that fragrances are not only bought for other people, but also for ourselves. Uh, here's some more promotional pictures for Father's Day, I believe. That was fun. And Gentleman's Lounge with some of my toys. Um, yeah, what else? day and night some promo stuff we got the office spray then i got more and more into 3d uh and this is actually it's kind of funny it's kind of like i tried to reconstruct the office of um the guy in american psycho <laughs> and if you look at it i try to replicate every single detail if you look at the movie it's actually very accurate uh i mean not photorealistically accurate, but all the elements are from that movie, if you look at it. Um, yeah, some more stuff here. Day, uh, black tie. Most of you probably already tuned out. If you're still here, thank you. We got a couple of custom bottles. Some banner signs. These are all 3D generated. And that is it. Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate you and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>